Hello, my name's Mike Breen, and I'm delighted to uh, be invited to share a, a, just a brief moment with you on the subject of discipleship. Discipleship, of course, goes back to Jesus. He called his first followers to be learners. That's what the word disciple really means, being learners, people who will learn the life of Jesus, not just what it is that he knows, but learn to be who it is that he is. That's the key. Being a disciple is more than just information. It's also to do with imitation. When Paul was writing to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, he said, you have many guardians in Christ. And that word is a very interesting word in the New Testament. The, the word is... Uh, is pedagogos. Uh, it means the, the person that takes care of children and trains them in their letters and numbers. Paul says, there are lots of people in your life who can do the job of giving you good information. But then he goes on to say, he says, but you have very few fathers. And then he says, because I'm your father, I want you to imitate me, imitate my life, because by imitating my life, you'll be imitating not only what I do, but also what it is that I believe in. And so he sent his disciple Timothy to them so that they would see again in the life of another disciple what it means to be a disciple of Jesus like Paul was. So it's, it's really important that as we look at the subject of discipleship, that we recognize that, yes, it is vital that we have the right information about Jesus. And of course, we get that from the Bible. We get that from the New Testament, from the Gospels. We have the right information, and that information, the Word of God is forming us and shaping us the way that we think. But also, we have models that we imitate. Right the way through my life, I've looked at other people, and I've noticed how it is that, that they've followed Jesus, how they've talked to other people, how they prayed, how they've had concern for the broken and the needy. And I've looked at their lives and the best that I could do was just simply imitate them. Now you might think that imitation is an insincere form of spiritual formation. You know, you're, you're imitating the life of another person and um, you may not believe what it is that the other person believes. But of course, you can act your way into thinking correctly about something. That's what you do with children. That's what, um, that's what people do in lots of other areas of life. Think about driving a car. You train a person to drive a car, and in the process of driving a car, they understand what it means to drive safely. Now, if you gave them a long course on how to be safe before you actually taught them how to drive, they may never actually become a safe driver. So, really engaging with the information about Jesus and allowing that to form us and shape us, as it did for the first disciples, is enormously important. But then, having a model that we imitate. We look for other people, and we look for their lives, and we say, I'm going to imitate that particular characteristic in that other person, because in that characteristic, they look like Jesus. Now, of course, uh, then it may come to us. Maybe some folks are actually imitating us. Well. The truth of it is, of course, that, that everybody's imitating you in your life to one degree or another. Uh, the way I've often described it is this, that all Christians look like shepherds from behind and sheep from the front. You know, if you, if you look over your shoulder, you'll generally see somebody else who's looking to you for an example. There's at least one other person. And when they're looking to you for an example, they're looking to you for a pattern that they can imitate, a model that they can imitate. Now, those of you who are Wesleyans will know that this is foundational to being a Wesleyan Christian. This is the way that Wesley functioned right from the very beginning with the Holy Club and then on through the, the small groups uh, that they, they called class meetings and societies in those days. They were the places where mature Christians offered their lives not as a perfect example, but as a living example of what it means to follow Jesus. So... Information, the right information about Jesus so that we can follow him. Imitation, the pattern of life that we want to 
model our lives upon. And then as we put that together in our life, a disciple begins to do the final step, which is to innovate. So information and imitation leads to innovation in our lives. You know, the people in your life who are in your workplace, the people in your life who are in your immediate or extended family, the people that are in your community, they don't need a disciple that you can tell them about that lives somewhere else. They need you to be the example of Jesus among them. You've allowed your heart and mind to be fashioned by his word. You've allowed your life to be shaped by the pattern of discipleship that you've seen in other people's lives. And now your life has become the pattern that other people see. And the pattern that they see is this innovation, this, this new emergence of what it means to be a disciple in your own life and in your own context. Now I think if we start doing that, the world will begin to see again what it means to be a follower of Jesus. If you ask people, everybody loves Jesus. I've never heard of anyone who really despises Jesus. Everybody loves Jesus. Some people may be suspicious of the church. Some people may be burned by their experience of the religious life. But the life of Jesus, modelled by you, is the life that everyone looks to and everyone longs for. So I hope you find that helpful. Try those three things. Information, imitation and innovation. <laughs>